السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today insha'Allah we will talk about one of the unique pearls in Islam One of the mothers of the believers, the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyida Safiya bint Huyay ibn Akhtab. Sayyida Safiya was of the wisest uh, woman. She was a, so uh, very pious, very pure. very clear, she was honorable, she was uh, 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 known to be one of the worshippers who Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, إِنَّ كِي لَبْنَةِ نَبِيِّ وَإِنَّ عَمَّ كِي لَنَبِيِّ وَإِنَّ كِي لَتَحْتَ نَبِيِّ You are the daughter of a, a prophet, And the your uncle is a prophet, and your husband is a prophet. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam witnessed that she she is, wallahi inna hala sadiqa. He swear by Allah subhanahu wa taala that she is truthful. She was a lover of knowledge, education. And she was one of those who narrated the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She passed away on the year 50 Hijri and she was were buried in Jannah al-Baqiyah along with the, all the mothers of the believers who were buried there. Let's go on in details, inshallah. Before we start about uh, Sayyida Safiya, we have to give a, a very short, uh, a brief idea about this, the Medina at that time. So the Jews of the Medina used to look at Islam with hatred and envy. The uh, Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not one of them. So they were waiting that the last prophet be of the Jews, but he wasn't. And that made them so upset and so angry. And they filled their hearts with hatred. And another level, the uh, Islam, the call to Islam was a unique call. It got the hearts together so people would love each other, which means that the tribes of Medina will be united, they will be powerful. And the, the Jews hide, uh, hid their plotting against Muslims. Uh, and that started uh, at the very beginning when they realized that Islam is going to settle in Medina. That Medina will be the city of the core of Islam. So they could not at that time uh, 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 speak it aloud. They kept it secret. So they, they couldn't show their hatred until after some time passed. So let's now listen to a Sayyidah Safiya, one of the pearls of Islam, one of the mothers of the believers, talking about this hatred to Islam. So a Sayyidah Safiya radiyallahu anha is the daughter of Huyayi ibn Akhtab. And uh, the blessed Sirah, 
which Ibn Ishaq wrote about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wrote about Safiya radiallahu anha telling this story. So she said, Kuntu ahabu, ahabu waladi, walada abi ilayhi. I was the most loved amongst my uh, um, siblings to my father and also to my uncle Abi Yasir. So when Rasulullah came to Medina and he was in Qiba, my father and my uncle went there. They went to, to, to check something. So when they came back, it was almost sunset, and they were so tired. They were, uh, they were so upset. And I, I rushed to them, the same that I used to do when I was young, when, when they would go visit anyone else. So none of them looked at me. And they were so upset. They were so sad. And I heard my uncle Abu Yasser uh, telling my father, Huyay, is he the one? Is he the one? And my father said, yes, I swear he is. And my uncle said, do you know him? Can you prove that? And he said, yes. So my uncle asked him, what, what, what do you have? What do you have towards him? What do you think you're doing? And he said, Hating him, being his enemy as long as I lived. And this was how Huyay ibn Akhtab lived. Hating Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and trying to kill him and doing anything against him. And he lived like this until he died. He was uh, killed uh, 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 later on by the Muslims. So Safiya radiallahu anha was listening to the, to the conversation between her father and her uncle. And she was listening to the, to the grudge and to the hatred that they both had against Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She felt something. She felt that she had some mercy. She felt that there is something in her life, in her, in her soul, deep in her heart, telling her that there will be something between herself and this prophet they are hating. So, this was a witness, this story that was told by Safiya radiallahu anha was a witness how, uh, uh, how, uh, hate, how much hatred her father and uncle and all the, uh, their companions of Jews had towards Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they were plotting against him. They were trying to do anything that would, uh, that would bother him, that, that they could uh, do anything bad to him. So it's worth mentioning here that Safiya radiallahu anha was uh, of the children of uh, Nabiullah Yaqub, and she was of the offspring of Harun, Prophet Harun, an, and her uncle was Sayyidina Musa, السلام, the brother of Sayyidina Harun. Sayyidina Safiya anha, was very wise, she was very pious. She was ascetic. She, was, she had a pure soul. She had a clear soul. And she was well known uh, of generosity. She was 
a forgiver. She was, she was someone who was so special. So let's, let's see how she became the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We knew that the Jews had deep enmity to Islam and to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, of, these, of these Jews were the group of uh, the Jews of Khaybar. So they were trying to take uh, any chance just to, uh, to point their arrows against Islam. So when the Muslims came back of uh, the Treaty of Hudaybiya, so we know that the Quraysh did not allow them to get into Mecca and to, to, uh, to, to go around the Kaaba uh, to, to, to do the tawaf. The Jews at that time thought that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not uh, accept the, these harsh conditions except for they were getting weaker and uh, they, they, the Muslims are uh, um, depressed. They cannot, they cannot do what they want. So they tried to get to get advantage of this point, and they thought that, that they can do something here. So they they sent to uh, the tribe of Ghatafan and to the Arabs in the deserts just to get uh, the people together to fight Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The news reached Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he uh, realized that they were trying to uh, go into war against them. So he did not, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Muhammad did not wait uh, for the Jews to come to fight him. But what he did, he asked those who were with him in Al Hudaybiyah to go out, to go out to fight the Jews. So there were, of course, some hypocrites and they didn't want to go. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Al Fatih, Ayah 15. When he said, سيقول المخلفون إذا انطلقتم إلى مغانم لتأخذوها ذرونا نتبعكم. Those who remain behind will say when you set out towards uh, toward the, the word booty to take it, let's follow you. يريدون أن يبدلوا كلام الله. They wish to change the words of Allah. قل لن تتبعونا. Say, never will you follow us. كذلكم قال الله من قبل. Thus did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say before. فسيقولون بل تحسدوننا. So their response would be, rather you envy us. بل كانوا لا يفقهون إلا قليلا. But in fact, they were not understanding except a little. So what happened? Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, decided who to take with him to Khaybar so that there will be no hypocrites amongst them. So only those who are willing to go for jihad, they are following Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who are going for booties, no, they are not going with him. So only those strong believing people of the companions went with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they were about uh, 1,400 uh, 400 of those believers. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went out to fight the Jews. And that was the year seven of Al-Hijrah. Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, 
was so victorious at that uh, uh, battle. It was the Battle of Khaybar. And uh, the hypocrites were uh, were in touch with their Jews leaders. So they told them that Muhammad came to you, is headed to you, he is going to, to uh, fight you, but don't worry, they are, uh, they are not as much, uh, they are not as much in number the same way you are, and they, they, are, they, are, they don't have lots of uh, weapons to fight you, so don't worry about them. But those people who went out, who headed to Khaybar, were the true believers. And with the army, there was the wives of the, of the fighters. They, they used to go to to help the uh, uh, the army uh, to take care of the wounded ones and that was against uh, or um, uh, not the same as the wives of those who used to go in the non-believers armies they used to go for fun or to to urge the the men to fight the muslims but no the army of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was strong in faith So before getting uh, to, uh, before entering Khaybar, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, stop. So the army all stopped. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the dua. He said, Allahumma rabba samawati was, rabba samawati sab'i wa ma azlan. Oh Allah, Lord of the seven heavens and all they overshadow. وَرَبَّ الْأَرَضِينَ السَّبْعِ وَمَا أَقْلَلْنَ Lord of the seven worlds and all they uphold. وَرَبَّ الشَّيَاطِينِ وَمَا أَضْلَلْنَ Lord of the devils and all they lead astray. وَرَبَّ الْرِيَاحِ وَمَا ذِرَيْنَ Lord of the winds and all they scatter. أسألك خير هذه القرية وخير أهلها وخير ما فيها. I ask you, Allah, I ask you for the goodness of this town and for the goodness of its people and for the goodness it contains. وأعوذ بك من شرها وشر أهلها وشر ما فيها. I seek refuge in you from its evil. From the evil of its people and from the evil it contains. The Muslims are now at the uh, uh, borders of Khaybar. So they spent the night over there. And Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, if he used to go. Uh, If he used to go to fight some people, he would not. Uh, he would not come to them. He would not start the fighting until it's in the morning. He won't fight at night. He won't start it in, at night. So in the morning, when uh, uh, the messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reached Khaybar, and the people of Khaybar came out with their spades. And when they saw the Prophet وسلم, they said, Muhammad and his army, they were so surprised to see Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, arrived to fight them. And they returned hurriedly to, to, to take refuge in the fort. So the Prophet وسلم, raised his hands and said, Allahu Akbar, Kharibat Khaybar. Allah is great, Khaybar is ruined. Inna idha nazalna bisahati qawmin fasa'a sabahul munzareen. If we approach a nation, then miserable is the mourning of those who are warned. So 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, gave a big victory to, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he opened the fort. He, uh, there were so many captives. Uh, and Safiya bin Tuhuyay was one of these captives, captured. So uh, now the war ended. Uh, one of the uh, companions, his name was Dihya al-Kalbi, he came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Nabi Allah, a'tuni jariyatan min as-sabi. Oh, uh, Messenger of Allah, I want you to give me a slave, a woman of, the, of those who were captured. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam agreed and he said, go and take one. So, uh, Dihya, took Safiya bin Juhuyay. One man came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, Ya Nabi Allah, a'tayta dihya Safiya bin Juhuyay, Sayyidi Qurayza, Sayyidati Qurayza wa bidin nadir, la tasluhu illa lak. Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, you gave dihya Safiya bin Juhuyay, she is the the uh, lady of the she is uh, the leader of Qurayza and she, and Bani Nadir. Such a woman is not uh, to go to anyone except to you, Ya Rasulullah. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, call uh, Dihya and ask him to bring her. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, when Dihya came with uh, the slave woman, he looked at her and he said to her, he said to Dihya, go and take another one, another slave and leave this one. So he took another one. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before the uh, booties were to be distributed, he would have one portion of the booty, which is called As-Safi, and that might be a slave or a slave woman or a horse. He would choose that before the, before the booty is distributed. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took uh, Safiya radiallahu anha. And when uh, the army just came back uh, toward Medina, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to consume, uh, he wanted to get married to uh, Safiya and he wanted to consume the marriage. But Safiya, it was only about six miles away from Khaybar, so Safiya refused. Something was in her heart and she refused. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, respected her opinion and he, he did not uh, do anything. So he, they, they, the army just went back until, until uh, it, uh, they reached a place called Sahba, and there say, the marriage took place. And Safiya says, مَا مِنَ النَّاسِ أَحَدٌ أَكْرَهُ إِلَيَّ مِنْهِ No one is more hated to myself than this person, than Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? He killed her father in Qurayza, and he killed her husband and her people in Khaybar. And she mentioned that to him. He knew that. He knew Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that, and he felt how, uh, how she feels about him. So he kept telling him, telling her that her people did so and so, and uh, they did so and so, and they they plotted so and so. So their actions just they they were rewarded for their actions. They were punished for their actions. So he kept telling her that until Allah Subhanahu wa Taala took away all hatred from herself towards Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she said, Intahaytu ila Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wama minan nasi ahadun akrahu ilayya minh. 
no one was more hatred, hated to my heart than him. فَقَالَ إِنَّ قَوْمَكِ صَنَعُوا كَذَا وَكَذَا But he told me that your people did so and so. فَمَا قُمْتُ مِنْ مَقْعَدِي I did not leave my seat. وَمَا مِنَّ النَّاسِ أَحَدٌ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ No one is more loved to my heart than he, he was. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave Safiya the choice. He can free her and she would uh, go back to her family or she would be a Muslim and uh, she, she would live her life with him. So of course she said, I would choose Allah and his messenger. So he freed her and that was her... Uh, uh, Dory, and she became one of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the mothers of the believers. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, لَقَدْ هَوَيْتُ Islam. I love Islam. وَصَدَّقْتُ بِكْ And I believe in you. And I don't have anyone. I don't, I don't care about Judaism. I don't have a father. I don't have a brother. I don't want to go back. So this answer just shows us how, uh, how wise she was. She listened to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She looked into the situation uh, rationally. So she realized where the khair is. She was honorable. She was reasonable. She was intelligent. She was so beautiful. So... Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her, مَا حَمَلَكِ عَلَى الْإِمْتِنَاعِ مِنَ النُّزُولِ أَوَّلًا Why, you ref why did you refuse to get married uh, immediately after, uh, the first time? So she said, خَشِيتُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ قُرْبِ الْيَهُودِ She said, you, we were so close to the Jews and I was scared that they might hurt you. And this answer gave her much more love, gave Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam much more uh, love to her. So he loved her. When she, when she was married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she was 17 years old. And she was nicknamed as Ummu Yahya. So when she came to uh, uh, to Medina with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was so kind to her. And Safiya felt how, how kind Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And she said, مَا رَأَيْتُ قَطُّ أَحْسَنَ خُلُقًا مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. I never found someone who is more, uh, uh, who has the best character, uh, the best manners as the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the, uh, the person who was in charge announced to the people of Medina that the army came back and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is back. So all the uh, people in Medina, they went out to uh, greet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his women were getting ready to welcome Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, there was some jealousy. As a, uh, the mother of a believer, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, was so jealous. She knew, she realized, she got the news that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got married to Safiya bint Huyay. 
the leader of his uh, tribe. And she was so beautiful. She was 17 years old. And she was so jealous. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted uh, Safiya radiallahu anha to be in the house of Najib ibn Harith ibn Nu'man. And uh, where that was where she uh, she stayed uh, at that time. And uh, the uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, the first one who he visited was, of course, his daughter, Sayyida Fatima radiallahu anha, Fatima Zahra. So he went in and he was uh, kissing his grandchildren, Al-Hassan and Al-Hussein. And uh, then he left and he saw his women and uh, they welcomed him. And he noticed the jealousy in the eyes of Aisha radiallahu anha. So he was watching her. So Aisha radiallahu anha uh, got uh, veiled and she wanted to go and see her, uh, the, the new wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she went uh, and uh, uh, she went to the house of uh, Haritha, uh, thinking that no one would recognize her. She was veiled all over. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at her and he, of course, knew her. And he waited until, until she went out and uh, he went out after her and uh, he stopped her and he said, Ya So how, how, how did you, what did you find? And Aisha radiallahu anha tried to, uh, not to say what, uh, what's in her heart, but the, the words uh, rushed out of her mouth. And she said, I saw just a Jew, a Jewish woman amongst uh, other Jewish women. Uh, women. So he said, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam corrected her. And he, say, he said to her, uh, Ya Aisha, don't say that. لا تقولي ذلك فإنها أسلمت وحسن إسلامها. Don't say that. She is a Muslim and she is a good Muslim. So Aisha, of course, radiallahu anha, went back to her, uh, to her secret keeper, Hafsa radiallahu anha, the uh, wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, they were talking about her. Safiya radiallahu anha, the new mother, the new mother of the believers, was so kind. And she had in mind that she doesn't want to make to have any problems. She wanted everyone to love her. And she started to get to their hearts by giving some gifts. So she started with uh, Sayyidina Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She loved her and uh, they both exchanged that love. And Safiya radiallahu anha gave her a gift of gold that she had um, uh, some earrings uh, she, she uh, was wearing. And she, she also gave some, gifts, some gold to the other, uh, to, to uh, some uh, of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was the gold she came, uh, that she brought with her from Khaybar. Safiya radiallahu anha was so wise and uh, she uh, she uh, uh, didn't want to have any reactions uh, she didn't want to cause uh, to be the reason that the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have any reaction against her but they the uh, jealousy was there. So one day she uh, uh, came to, uh, to know that Hafsa radiallahu anha, the daughter of uh, Sayyidina Umar and the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, said about her, she is the daughter of a Jewish. 
and that hurt uh, hurt Safiya radiallahu anha and she was crying and when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in she was still crying and he, he asked her why, why are you crying and she told him what Hafsa said that she's the daughter of a Jewish person and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her what to say he said innaki uh, labnatu nabi you are the daughter of the of uh, a, a prophet and uh, uh, that was harun radiyallahu an she was one of the grandchildren of uh, sayyidna harun and her uncle is a prophet sayyidna musa the the uh, the brother of Sayyidina Harun. Wa inna kila tahtanabiyan. Your husband is a uh, is um, a prophet. So why are they, uh, uh, saying uh, these words against you? So later he said to Hafsa, "Ittaqillah ya Hafsa." So this was. Uh, the uh, Sayyidina Hafsa with the wives of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, Aisha Radiallahu Anha was always jealous of her. One time she uh, was um, uh, talking to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when uh, the uh, Sophia was mentioned Radiallahu Anha, she said, oh, that, that short woman. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, did not accept that. And he said to her, لَقَدْ قُلْتِ كَلِمَةً لَوْ مُزِجَتْ بِمَاءِ الْبَحْرِ لَمَزَجَتْ If uh, you, you said a word, if it's mixed with the, with the water of a sea, then it will, uh, uh, it, it will get that water bad. So, uh, Sayyida Safiya, radiallahu anha, was loved by Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, he said about her, Wallahi, innaha la sadiq. When did Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that? Um, when uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, was uh, sick and it was his uh, uh, few, uh, last few uh, days, last few hours. And... Uh, the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were all together. And Safiya said to him, Wallahi ya Nabi Allah, lawadittu anna alladhi bika bi. She, she uh, swore to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Ya O oh, Messenger of Allah, I wish that I, I am suffering from what you are suffering and you are safe. So the wives, the other wives, looked at her and they winked at each other. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu noticed that. And he said to them, go make wudu. And they asked him, why, are, why Prophet of Allah? He said, because of, of your winking. Wallahi innaha ala sadiqa. I swear that she is truthful. So... Uh, she was known, she was known to be a very nice, very wise person. One time, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, out at night and uh, it was uh, Safiya radiallahu anha uh, was walking with him. Two men of the Ansar came and they uh, gave salam to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were, they were walking and they uh, gave salam to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called them and he said to them, Ala rislikuma, innama hiya Safiya bin Juhuyay. He said, she is Safiya. 
the daughter of Huyay. And the two men said, Subhanallah, Ya Rasulullah. Yani it was so, so uh, uh, hard on them that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is explaining to them that she is Safiya, my wife. And the answer of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَبْلُغُ مِنْ إِبْنِ آدَمَ مَبْلَغَ الدَّمْ وَإِنِّي خَشِيتُ أَنْ يُقْذَفَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمَا شَيْئًا He said to them, Saturn, the devil, circulates in the, in the human body as blood does. I was afraid that you might have something in your heart. So that's why Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, wanted to explain to, the, to them that she is his wife. Sayyidina Safiya radiallahu anha, she was in love with the Quran. She was so knowledgeable with the meanings of the Quran. She was knowing some of its secrets. She was knowing how effective Quran is to the hearts, to the pure hearts. And she was uh, reciting Quran during the night and during the day. Let's stop for a second. This is a big lesson. This is a, 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 an important lesson for all of us. The mothers of the believers are our model. We have to learn this from them. We have to get connected to the Quran. We have to get connected to the meanings of the Quran. We have to know uh, uh, that we, uh, when someone is upset, when someone is sad, when someone has a problem, he would just forget about these things that are bothering him. He would get in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his book. Through his book. The book of Allah would make you forget everything around you. It, this is just the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are reading the Quran, we are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing that he is hearing us. Knowing, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Du'uni astajib lakum, make du'a and I will answer your calls. And the Quran has a lot of du'a. So much du'a in the Quran. So when you are in a trouble, just get back to the Quran. Make wudu, sit with your Quran and forget about this dunya. Get the nur of the Quran to touch your heart. When that happens, then you will overcome your problems. So this was Sayyida Safiya radiallahu anha. She had a special connection with the Quran. And she had also a special connection to the Sunnah, to the words of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when she, when she has any, any issue, then she would, she would directly direct this issue to the Quran and to the Sunnah to the words of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, one more thing about uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen Safiya radiallahu anha. She was so generous. Money would not stay with her. She would spend for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. She would know that this dunya is this, this life has no value. There is nothing valuable in this dunya. No one is going to take his valuables with him to the grave. Everything will be left behind. Everything. It's okay to be rich, 
but we want, we want our wealth to be in our pockets, not in our hearts. We don't want the wealth to get us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, we want the wealth to be a means so to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to give sadaqah, we want to give charity, we want to give zakah, we want to help others. We want to make uh, those unfortunate who are, uh, who, do, who are in need of help, we want to make them happy. This is why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us wealth, wealth, but not to save it and to keep it and not to spend it. No. So Sayyida Safiya radiallahu anha was so generous. Also, when uh, 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 Sayyida Safiya radiallahu anha I just mentioned that she, she had a special connection to the words of Sayyida Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so she was of those who narrated the uh, hadith of Sayyida Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she was following the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 34, when Allah said, وَذْكُرْنَ مَا يُتْلَى فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Talk about, teach what is mentioned in your houses, what is revealed in your houses of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of the sunnah the narrations of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she, she uh, memorized so many hadith and uh, uh, she narrated the hadith to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she tried her best to memorize as much as she could of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Safiya radiallahu anha, mother of the believers, was a special woman. So pious, so knowledgeable, so kind, so merciful, so generous. After Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, Sayyida Safiya radiallahu anha lived uh, around about uh, 40 years after his death, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving sadaqah, teaching people. And she lived the uh, uh, during the time of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Omar, Sayyidina Ali. Uh, she lived with them. And it was in the year 50 of Hijrah, that Sayyidah Safiya radiallahu anha wa ardaha passed away, leaving very good reputation, very good. She, uh, she touched the hearts of everyone. And when she passed away, someone told Ibn Abbas about her death. So he made sujood. And when he asked, he was asked about it, why, why would you make sujood at this time? And it was after super, uh, after Fajr prayer. And he said, أَلَيْسَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ آيَةً فَسْجُدُوا Hasn't Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you saw uh, a sign, if you saw something important, just make, make sujood? What is a bigger sign than the death of one of the prophet's wives? So, in Al Madin Al Munawwara, the, uh, our mother of the believers, Safiya radiallahu anha, was buried in Jannatul Baqiya, next to the other uh, mothers of the believers and next to the daughters of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this was just a little bit about the mother of the believers, Sayyidina Safiya 
رضي الله عنها she's our model and we have to follow their, their, her footsteps so inshallah until we meet again next week i leave you by sending my salam and your salam special salam to sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and may allah unite us all under his banner with his wives and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us in this dunya and in the life after wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh